hello students welcome to my channel let's solve this problem 437 in this problem we are required to calculate the forces and member bc cd and cg right so this bc member this cd member and this cg member we have to find the forces in these three members right and it is said that the loaded truss composed of equilateral triangles right so all of these triangles are equilateral triangles and the length of each side of this equilateral triangle is 8 meters right so if if all these triangles are equilateral triangles so the angles are 60 degree right all angles are 60 degrees so now to solve this problem first we have to find the reactions at point j and at this particular point right so or uh, we can find the force in this in this member of this given truss right so if we consider this j point so here we have pin joint so there will be two reaction one reaction will be acting in the horizontal direction let's say that this is j x and there will be one another reaction let's say that will be acting in the upward direction right so this will be j y reaction and here we will have a force which will be acting upward let's say if we consider this whole truss right so then there will be a force here which will be acting upward right so let's say that this this force is g right so now if we apply the summation of moment about point j equals to zero right since if we if we determine the this d force the force in this member of this given truss so then we will be able to pass a section and then we will be able to consider this right hand side of this given truss right so there will be no need to find the reaction at this point j right so we will try to find this d force this d reaction force right so if we apply the summation of moment about point j equal to zero and if we assume that the counterclockwise mo moment is positive right so then as we can see that this three kilonewton force is producing the clockwise moment about that point j so we will write three and it is producing clockwise so we will write minus three and the perpendicular distance of this 3 kN force from that point J is this 8 plus this 8, right? So, it is 16. So, this is 16 into 3. Similarly, this D force, this D tension in this uh, part of the truss and this member of the truss, it is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point J. So, we will write plus D and the perpendicular distance of this D from that point J, if we extend this line, right? So, 8, 8 and 8. So, we have 3, 8. So, it is 24 and this half, right? So, this length is 4. So, the perpendicular distance of this D from that point J is 28, right? So, 24 plus 4. So, this is 28. So, we will write 28 D. And as we can see that this 5 kN force is producing the clockwise moment about that point J. But uh, either we have to find the perpendicular distance of this uh, 5 kN force from that point J or either we will use the Varignan theorems to find the moment of this 5 kN force, right? So, now for that if I, if I extend uh, this horizontal member of this truss, right? If I extend this GF member and if I extend the line of action of this 5 kN force right so they will intersect at a point right let's say that let's say that this point is k right so if we resolve this 5 kN force at this point k so then it will have two components right it will have one component which will be acting in this direction right and it will have one another component which will be acting vertically downward right and as we can see that as we know that all the triangles are equilateral triangles so this angle is 60 degree and this angle is also 60 degrees so this means that this angle is also 60 degrees this is given that this is 90 degrees so if this is 90 this is 60 so then this angle is 30 degrees right so this means that this component is 5 cos of 30 degrees and this one is 5 sin of 30 degrees right so now as we can see that this cos component is passing through that point j so it will not produce the moment about that point j and the sine component is producing the clockwise moment about that point j right so we will write minus 
5 sin of 30 degrees and the perpendicular distance of this sin component from that point j is this 8 times 4 right so this is 32 from this j to f let me write the perpendicular distance of this sine component is the we can write that the perpendicular distance of that sine component is from j to k right we can write it j k right and this j k length is equal to j f length plus f k length right so this j f length is 8 times 4 right so this is 32 32 plus f k so this f k is unknown right so first we have to find this f k length let's say that this f k length is equal to y and this e f length is given this is 8 right so we can write it like this so if this length is y and this length is 8 so if we resolve this y length into its components right so if the y cos of 60 component we can write that y cos of 60 degrees will be equal to 8 right if we apply cos of 60 to this triangle right so in cos of 60 if, if we can write that cos of 60 will be equal to base so base is 8 and hypotenuse is y so we can write that y cos of 60 equals to 8 or we can write that y equals to 8 divided by cos of 60 degrees so from this y equals to 16 meters right so this means that this fk length is 16 meters right so the perpendicular distance of this sine component from that point j is 32 plus 16 so we can write that this is 32 plus 16 so this is 48 so we will multiply this with 48 right and let me remove this cos component since it's not producing the moment about that point k this y equals to 16 meters right so this will be equal to 0 so from this we can write d this d force this is equal to 16 into 3 plus 48 into 5 sine of 30 degrees divided by 28 so from this the d force equals to 6 kilonewton right so now we know that here here the force is 6 kilonewton right this force is 6 kilonewton right so now if we want to find the forces in bc cd and cg member so first we need to pass a cutting section through this cd and cg right and then we will analyze the right hand side of uh, that cutting section right so if we pass a cutting section from this cd CG and GH. Now we will consider this right hand side, right, as a free body diagram, right. So we will assume that the CD member force, this is the CD member force, right, this is the CG member force, it is acting away, and this one is the GH member force, right. So now if we apply the summation of moment about this point G, so this CG and this GH, they are passing through this point G, so they will not produce the moment about this point G. So we will be left with this CD member force and and this 5 kN force and this 6 kN force, right? So let me apply the summation of moment about point G equals to 0 and let's say that the counterclockwise moment is positive, right? So as we can see that this CD is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point g so i will write plus cd and the perpendicular distance of this cd from that point g is this distance right so let's say that that this point is let's say l right so this dl is the perpendicular distance of this cd so first we have to find this dl length right so from this triangle if i draw that half triangle Right. So, this length is 8, this is given, this GD member length is 8, this is 4, right. So, we can find this DL length and this is that point G. 
so and this angle is 60 degrees right so dl length is 8 sine of 60 degrees right so from this this dl the perpendicular distance of that cd force from that point g is dl and this dl equals to 4 square root 3 meters right so the height of all of these triangles is equal to 4 square root 3 meters right so we will multiply this with 4 square root 3 right this length this length is 4 square root 3 right and then as we can see that this 6 kilonewton force is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point g so again i will write plus 6 and the perpendicular distance of this 6 kilonewton force from that point g is this 4 meters right so we will multiply this with 4 and again as we can see that if we resolve this 5 kilonewton force at this point k so it will have two components it will have this cos component and this sine component so again this cos component is passing through that point g so it will not produce the moment about that point g only this sine component is producing the moment about that point g so again we will write and this sine component is producing the clockwise moment about that point g so we will write minus 5 sine of 30 degrees and the perpendicular distance of this sine component from that point g is this gf length so gf length is 8 plus 16 so this is 24 so we will multiply this with 24 and this will be equal to 0 so from this cd member force equals to 24 into 5 sine of 30 degrees minus 4 into 6 divided by 4 square root 3 so from this cd member force equals to 5.20 kilonewton and since the sign is positive so this means that the cd is acting away from this point d so this is the tension force right so this is that cd force which is 5.20 kilonewton force and it is the tension force now to find this cg member force we can apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero right as we can see that this cd force is horizontal this gh force is horizontal right uh, it is acting in the x direction right if this is our x direction and this is our y direction right so this cd is acting in the horizontal direction gh is acting in the horizontal direction this six kilonewton and this uh, sign component is acting in the vertical direction right so we can find this cg force since this six kilonewton and both of these are known right so if we resolve this cg force into its components right so this cg force is making 60 degrees right so this cg force will have one component which will be acting vertically upward right so it will have let me write this cg here so it will have one component acting vertically upward and it will have one component which will be acting in this direction right so now if we apply the summation of force along y and if this is our positive direction so we can write that this component this is the sine component right so we can write that cg sine of 60 degrees it is acting in the positive direction so i will write plus this 6 kilonewton is acting in the positive direction so i will write plus 6 and this sine component is acting in the negative direction so i will write minus 5 sine of 30 degrees and this will be equal to 0 right so from this cg member force equals to 5 sine 30 degrees minus 6 divided by sine of 60 degrees so this cg member force equals to minus 4.04 kilonewton right so this since the sign is negative so this means that cg member force is 4.04 kilonewton and this is compressive force right it is acting towards that joint g right so this means that this is the compressive force now to find that bc member force what we need to do is that we need to consider another cutting section right so we have to pass another cutting section right so let me let me pass a cutting section through this bc right so then if we pass a cutting section through this bc 
this ch and this gh right so i will pass a cutting section from here here and here right so let me isolate the right hand side of this given truss so now let's assume that this bc member force is acting away from this point c this is acting away right this is ch member force and this one is that gh member force right and this is that point h remember right and this is that bc member force so we are interested to find this bc member force so as we can see that this the line of action of this g uh, gh member force and the line of action of this uh, this one is ch right so c the line of action of this ch member force is passing through this point h and the line of action of this gh member force is passing through this point h so if we apply the summation of moment about point h equals to 0 so both of these will not produce the moment about that point h right so ch and gh they will not come into our calculation right so we will be able to find this bc member force right so now if we apply the summation of moment about point h and if we assume that the counterclockwise moment is positive right so as we can see that this bc member force is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point h so i will write bc it is producing counterclockwise so we will write plus the perpendicular distance of this bc member force from that point h is again the height of this uh, triangle and and the height of this triangle is equal to this dl and this is 4 square root 3 so we will multiply this with 4 square root 3 and this is plus and as we can see that this 6 kilonewton force is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point h so i will write plus 6 and the perpendicular distance of this 6 kilonewton force from that point h is this hl length right so i will write that this the perpendicular distance of this 6 kilonewton force from that point h is hl length and that hl length is this 8 plus this half so 8 plus 4 so this is 12 so we multiply this with 12 and again if we resolve this 5 kilonewton force at this point k into its components right so it it has two components this sine component this cos component so again this cos component is passing to that point h so it will not produce the moment about that point h so again this sine component is producing the clockwise moment about that point h so we will write minus 5 sine of 30 degrees and the perpendicular distance of this sine component from that point h is this hk length right so hk length is equal to this 8 plus 8 so 16 and 16 plus 16 so this is 32 so this hk length is 32 so we will multiply this with 32 and this will be equal to 0 so from this we can find this bc length this bc member 4 so this is bc equals to this is minus 12 into 6 plus 32 into 5 sine of 30 degrees divided by 4 square root 3 so from this bc member force equals to 1.155 kilonewton right and the sign is positive so if the sign is positive so this means that the direction is accurate since it is acting away from this point c so this means that this is the tension force right so this is that bc member force which was required this is that cg member force and this is that cd member force right so this is the solution of this particular problem